Good morning, America. You've tuned in to The Unfiltered Truth on David Michael Woods Unfiltered. I am your host, David Woods, and alongside me is our co-host, Kaylee Page Witherspoon. And we're here to break down today's biggest stories with one mission, delivering the truth with no spin. Just facts. Let's go ahead and get started. Yes, good morning, David. Welcome everyone, we've got a packed show today covering everything from political shakeups to the international conflicts, so let's jump right on in. All right, well, let's go ahead and start with the Democratic Convention chaos. First up, let's talk about what went down at the Democratic Convention in Chicago last night. Authorities are searching for multiple unknown female offenders involved in a bizarre incident where maggots were reportedly found in a hotel used by convention attendees. And this is a shocking development. It has left many asking, what's really going on behind the scenes? This event has definitely raised some eyebrows and added fuel to an already tense political environment. We're definitely going to have to keep an eye on this, monitor the story, and we will bring you more details as they emerge. That's disgusting, David. Maggots? Ugh. I couldn't agree more. Maggots? Really? Yeah, that's... That's going way out there and doing way too much. But let's jump into our next topic here, uh, staying on election news. Rumor has it, and this could be a huge shakeup in the political landscape, but rumors are saying that Robert Kennedy Jr., could be dropping out as early as today or tomorrow morning and joining Donald J. Trump at a rally in Phoenix, Arizona. Both Trump and Kennedy are going to be in Arizona on Friday. And if he drops out and endorses Donald Trump, that's going to change a lot for this independent base that's kind of, you know, on the fence right now. And I mean, it's a huge major shift. I mean, I already think Donald Trump has enough momentum. You know, I think he had it, you know, going into the summer, and then I had the assassination attempt, and now you're going to have Robert Kennedy Jr. possibly endorsing you. Yeah, this is a huge move for Donald Trump and uh, securing that White House seat again. You're 100% right there. Kennedy's decision could impact voters who are on the fence, especially those who have been frustrated with both major parties. We know there's a lot of people in this country that didn't want Trump. They didn't want Biden. Either one. And that's caused a lot of frustration. And, you know, both parties. And it's, it's disturbing how everything is working out right now. But we have to keep an eye on it and see what develops. But this definitely could impact those independent voters. David, you're right. Well, I mean, that just, it makes sense to me. You know, he's got, what, 6% I think Kennedy's polling at 6 or 5%. Now, that doesn't mean all those will come to Trump. But it, it'd be huge. It'd be huge to not have to debate Kennedy or go up against Kennedy. I think Robert Kennedy Jr., um, if he was a Democratic nominee, Trump probably would be maybe sweating a little bit. I think it would have been a great race, and I think it would have been a great debate. And I think uh, it would have been a lot of fun to see. It's just unfortunate that the Democrats didn't want Kennedy. Um, but yeah, i just curious to see where that goes. I've had some uh, gut feelings that uh, he could be joining the Dream Team. Now speaking of Trump, he held his first rally 
outside yesterday, and that was the first time we had an outside rally since the shooting, July 13th, in Butler, Pennsylvania, where Crooks attempted to take his life. Now, he had this rally behind bulletproof glass. But there was a moment when Trump actually stepped out. There was a uh, rally goer that I don't know fainted or maybe got too... I don't know what the details was, but they passed out. And Trump actually left the little bulletproof cubicle to go check on one of his supporters. Really, really heartwarming things that you're not going to hear on the news. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Donald Trump, sometimes on the surface, can be really, really rough. Sometimes almost impossible to listen to. He gets on his rants. But he really does know how to engage with his, his audience and his following and his base. These supporters love this man. And you can't, you can't not Trump. I mean, his resilience... The ability to maintain a strong base could prove crucial as this election draws near. The energy at the rally was undeniable. Yes, yes, it was. I mean, I've been to Trump rallies. They are, the energy at the Trump rallies are always, always high. Um, it's a good time. It's like a, a family reunion with like 100,000 people. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Patriots, people that love this country. And, yeah, he, he really does know how to, you know, resonate with his base. And, um, you know, I think that's great for the Republican Party. Um, me being a Republican, I love it. But I also would like to see the Democrats get that person that they can rally around as well. I think both parties need to strive. Um... Both parties were going down a wrong road. But no, Trump's way of getting his base and the rest of the party to you know, get behind him is, is remarkable. And, you know, as much as it'd be easy to say, you know, hey, Ace, yes, the Democrats are... Yeah. I, I don't want that. I want a great Democrat to emerge. I want, you know... Good competition, because that brings out the best. As being a former football coach, competition brings out the best. I would rather Trump go get somebody, like an Obama or somebody that actually can put together words, make a good argument. I want to see him go against the best. But no, the Democrats are going to roll out the JV team. Because I'm sorry, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are the JV team. But staying on that subject, I did read that the AP poll that was ran most recently is showing that Walls is favored among these young voters. Much more favored than Vance. You know, switching gears to polling, the latest numbers from the Associate Press show Minnesota Governor Tim Walls leading J.D. Vance among younger voters. The younger generation seems to be resonating more towards Walls' progressive agenda. But what does that mean, really, for the general election? It is really fascinating to see how different age groups are aligning. And it could play a huge role in determining who shows up at the polls. Gen Z appears to be prioritizing issues like the climate change, social justice, reproductive rights, where Walls has been more vocal on those categories. Yeah, he has been. That's Can't deny that there. Um, you know, just while we're on the, the topic of elections and candidates, have you seen the uh, New York Post story about the non-citizen? No, I have not heard about that. Um, would you enlighten me? What, what's going on in San Francisco? Well, the report was on the West Coast, there's some controversy that erupted over San Francisco's decision to appoint a non-citizen Chinese immigrant 
to the City Election Commission. Supporters argue it's a step towards inclusivity, while critics see it as a threat to election integrity. What do you think about this, Kaylee? That is a decision certainly brings up complex questions about who should be involved in the democratic processes, especially in a time when election security has been such a hot button issue nationwide. This makes no sense for them to go ahead and do this. Like why? Why would they do this? This is definitely a hot button issue and I can understand why Republicans are screaming at the top of their lungs on this one. You know, the argument is this is a step two to inclusivity. No, she's not even a citizen. She is not an American citizen. This is absurd. And I think California is like their little testing site. See what they can get away with before they roll it out to the country. This doesn't make any sense at all, Kaylee. This is absurd. In fact, like you mentioned, this is one of those hot button issues. It's got me a little hot. Why is a non citizen involved in our elections at all? Especially when the Democrats spent Trump's whole four years saying he could include Russia. It is definitely an interesting topic. Let's move over to discuss Israel and the conflict escalation with Iran. Yeah, turn to the international news. The conflict between Israel and Iran continues to intensify with new developments emerging every day. Analysts fear that this could escalate into a larger regional war potentially dragging in other global powers like the United States of America. Yes, the stakes are high as the situation unfolds America's role as an ally to Israel will be crucial, especially as diplomatic solutions seem harder and harder to achieve. It is definitely a mess over there. We've got a mess over there and Israel and Israel. We also got that mess in Ukraine, the Ukraine war with Russia. Back to Europe where the war between the Ukraine and Russia shows no signs of slowing down. Ukraine has supposedly made some tactical successes, but the significant human and economic cost. How much longer can this war continue to go on? This conflict has caused untold suffering and is shaping the future of global geopolitics. With winter approaching, maybe we'll see both sides finally adapt. But whether negotiations gain any traction, we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, indeed, we will. Yes, indeed. Well, let's uh, switch things over real quickly over sports. Uh, yesterday in the Major League Baseball, we had the New York Mets over the Baltimore Orioles, 4-3. Boston Red Sox 4-1 over the Astros. Texas Rangers 1-1 over the Pirates. Chicago White Sox take the Giants 6-2. That's two games in a row for the White Sox. 10-8 Diamondbacks beat the Marlins. 11-4 Twins pounced on the Padres. Nationals 6-1 over the Rockies. 8-1 with the Yankees over the Guardians. 11-7 the Reds beat the Blue Jays. 3 to 2 Phillies over the Braves. Cardinals hosted the Brewers win 10 to 6. Cubs dropped to the Tigers last night to Detroit 8 to 2. The Angels fall to the Royals 3 to nothing. Tampa Bay beats Oakland 4 to 2. And the Dodgers win the last game of the night 8 to 4. As for today, we've got Rockies and Nationals, Guardians, Yankees, Brewers, Cardinals. Tigers and Cubs again, Rays, Athletics, Reds, Pirates, Angels, Blue Jays, Phillies at the Braves, Astros at the Orioles, and the Mets at the Padres. And then going into the weekend, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates hosting the Reds for a three-game series. The Baltimore Orioles will host the Astros. The New York Yankees will host the Colorado Rockies. 
The LA Angels head to Toronto to take on the Blue Jays. Texas Rangers will be in Cleveland taking on the Guardians. The Arizona Diamondbacks head to Boston to take on the Red Sox. The Cubs go down to South Beach to take on the Marlins. And the Washington Nationals will be in Atlanta playing the Braves. The Minnesota Twins host the St. Louis Cardinals. The Detroit Tigers stay on the road in Chicago as they'll take on the White Sox. And the Philadelphia Phillies head to Kansas City for a matchup with the Royals. And the Brew Crew of Milwaukee heading out west to take on Oakland and the Athletics. And of course you've got the New York Mets heading to San Diego to take on the Padres. The San Francisco Giants, who just lost two games to the White Sox, as embarrassing that might be, they better shake it off as they go on the road to take on the Seattle Mariners. And then the Tampa Bay Rays square up with the L.A. Dodgers. That could be the series of the weekend. I think it'll be a great series. Uh, these teams met in the World Series a few years back. So I think it'll be interesting to see that game. Go Rays. But anyway, that's going to cover our sports segment. So... As we're wrapping up our show here, looking ahead, all eyes are on Philadelphia, as I said earlier in the show, next month for the highly anticipated first debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. This is sure to be a battle of ideologies as both candidates look to fight for America's future. With both candidates as being polarizing figures, this debate could set the tone the rest of the election. We'll be covering it closely, so be sure to stay tuned. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of The Unfiltered Truth. We appreciate all of you who join us daily in seeking the facts. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below. We want to know where you're tuning in from, whether it's here in the States or across the globe. And remember, your voice matters. Let us know your thoughts on today's stories and stay tuned for more updates. Until next time, stay informed, stay patriotic, and God bless America. Now we're wrong, right? But I do what's thing is right Can't handle you on my worst days I lost too much That's why I don't celebrate my birthdays I lost too much That's why I've been falling the earthquakes I lost too much Some of us are tall, some of us are day, some of us what I can't say.